I'm Aaron Nagler. I'm here with Chris Burke via Skype for SI.com, breaking down the Green Bay Packers 2016 NFL Draft. Chris, can the Packers get an impact player picking way down there at number 27? Yeah, I, mean, I think they can. It's not uh, an elite draft class on paper necessarily, but they're in a position where, you know, you kind of get the benefit of those teams that are in the playoffs. You can be a little pickier. You don't necessarily always have to go best player available if you have someone that fits your scheme and, and you need a starter. So I think they can get someone right there who steps in and plays, you know, is a 16 game starter for them and plays a big role. Looking at their needs and not having to go best player available, does the abrupt retirement of BJ Raji push defensive tackle up to the top of this team's need list? I think defensive line in general is somewhere that they'll look and possibly early and maybe even round one. Again, it's a great uh, really good deep defensive tackle class. Uh, the question is if you're looking for someone to necessarily replace Raji, we've seen teams sort of move away from the two down run stuffing type defensive tackles of late. I definitely expect them to take a defensive lineman within the first couple rounds. Now, Mike McCarthy has said he wants Clay Matthews to spend most of his time playing outside in 2016. Who could the Packers get an inside linebacker to ensure that that happens? Well, for me, if Reggie Ragland's on the board there, I'd be hard not to take him because I think he's arguably a top 15 talent in this class, and I think his his ability to play all three downs has been uh, underrated. I think he can be that type of player. But day two, day three, there are some interesting names there too. I think Nick Kwiatkowski from West Virginia, uh, Jared Norris is another one. And I definitely think Jatavis Brown has a future as an inside linebacker, probably in a scheme similar to what the Packers run. He's kind of undersized. At 5'11", there's been some talk of maybe moving him to safety, but he's just a tackling machine and absolutely would help that defense. Now, getting over to the offensive side of the ball, the Packers struggled mightily there in 2015. They did sign Jared Cook in free agency. It was only a one-year deal, though. Who might the Packers look at on day two to bolster the tight end group? I think that's probably when we'll see the tight ends start to come off the board. I'm not sure any of them get into day one, so you still should have a pretty good pick of things. And uh, Nick Vanette from Ohio State didn't really factor in their passing game a whole lot, but he can block, and I think he can get downfield and make some plays. And then Austin Hooper from Stanford uh, coming out of that pro-style system, but he actually played quite a bit of slot for them and moved out away from the line this year, can make some catches. Uh, he's a really big, interesting target. Now, we started by talking about impact players and the Packers getting one in this draft. Does Ted Thompson need to make a move to get an impact player to put this team over the hump? This is a team that keeps falling short of Super Bowl expectations. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if uh, make a move is necessarily in the Ted Thompson vernacular or impact <laughs> play. I mean, I think that they're very set, it famously set in the way that they do things, and it's, it's given them a lot of success. There you go. Chris Burke breaking it down. For Chris, I'm Aaron for SI.com.